Suppose you have to name one person who was indispensable to the historical formation and legacy of the Italian Mafia. In that case, you can name Charles Lucky Luciano. He was a chairman of the mob and the person who promoted crimes in America and particularly in New York City. Lucky Luciano was an Italian mobster born on November 24, 1897 in the city of Sicily, Italy, whereas he died in Naples on January 26, 1962 due to a heart attack. He's called the father of La Cosa Nostra, organized crime started in America by Lucky Luciano. In 1920, he became one of the big six. He was the man instrumental in creating mafia in the U.S. He started his criminal life early when he came to the United States. At that time, he was just 10 years old and was charged with his first crime, shoplifting. Lucky Luciano came to America along with his family in 1906. He was unable to speak English and had difficulty in school. Once, some men abducted Luciano and beat and stabbed him badly. Then they left him on Staten Island, assuming him dead. However, a police officer found Lucky and took him to a hospital. No one got to know the criminals who attacked Lucky, but some say it was the top crime boss, Masseria, or the police. At that time, Masseria was in a turf war with his rival boss, Salvatore Maranzano. Lucky Luciano used to work for Masseria many years ago. Then he started supporting Maranzano. With Maranzano's approval, Luciano took the position of Masseria as the top boss. Then Luciano became the chairman of the city's five families. Maranzano started considering Lucky Luciano a threat and tried to take him out. However, Luciano got to him first. The death of Maranzano made Luciano the dominant crime boss in the entire US. After taking over his rivals, Luciano started focusing on how criminal gangs do their business. He reached the pinnacle of the underworld of America, settling policies and directing activities along with the other mafia. Then, he formed a national organized crime network to stop any conflict. He implemented some new ideas and recognized the five important families in New York City, which allowed each to work in their respective areas, and he established a governing body for them. Lucky Luciano formed a ruling board, the Syndicate, and the Commission. This way, a new and prosperous era for the Mafia was signaled. The Syndicate had mob bosses of different ethnicities. Lepke Bukalter, Meyer Lansky, and Bugsy Siegel had a great Jewish influence on the board. The purpose of this commission was to mediate the dispute and, when required, provide cooperation between Italian families all over the United States. Both organizations provided the Mafia bosses with layers of insulation, power, prosperity, and legitimacy. All the heads of the mob were actively collaborating with each other. Even with the repeal of prohibition and the loss of income, the Mafia grew in power and influence. In 1930, Luciano lived in New York's luxurious Waldorf Tower. There, he named himself Charles Ross. He lived a life of a wealthy businessman there. He would wear custom-made suits and would ride around getting chauffeured. The 1930s was a prosperous time for Luciano when he strengthened his outreach in areas of prostitution, bootlegging, gambling, narcotics, loan sharking, and labor rackets. However, little did Luciano know that Thomas E. Dewey would end his good time. Luciano was now a popular figure in Broadway social circles. He used to dress smartly, and kept a permanent room at the Waldorf Astoria. His lifestyle gained the attention of Thomas E. Dewey, who arrested him in 1936 for facilitating prostitution. This way, Luciano was convicted and sentenced to prison for 30 to 50 years. However, he controlled the syndicate while behind bars. In the 1940s, during World War II, Luciano made a deal with the American Office of Naval Intelligence. He agreed to provide information necessary for protecting the mob-run New York docks from Nazi saboteurs in return for a move to a better prison and early parole. Therefore, Lucky Luciano was transferred to Great Meadow Correctional Facility from the Clinton Correctional Facility in Dannemora in upstate New York. He then continued his collaboration, called Operation Underworld, for the remaining time of the war. In 1946, Governor Thomas Dewey granted the mobster a commutation of sentence. He deported him to Italy, where he resumed control over the American syndicate. Lucky Luciano snuck into Cuba in 1946. There, he attended the Havana Conference, 
a meeting of the five major crime families hosted by Lansky, who already had an established presence in Cuba. The cover for the meeting was an appearance by Frank Sinatra. After a week-long conference focusing on the heroin trade and gambling activities in Cuba, he also decided the fate of Bugsy Siegel and his Las Vegas money pit, the Flamingo Hotel. Luciano met privately with Genovese, who suggested that Luciano take on a figurehead role as boss of bosses, while allowing Genovese, who controls the day-to-day -day activities of the syndicate. Luciano rejected this by saying, there is no boss of bosses. When the United States government got wind of Luciano's presence in Cuba, he immediately moved to have him repatriated to Italy, where he stayed for the rest of his life. While he continued to profit from criminal activities, his power and influence waned. As time passed, Luciano grew older, and his long-lasting relationship with Langsky started to falter. Lucky Luciano felt he wasn't getting enough share from the mob. Disgruntled, he arranged to have his memoirs written so that he couldn't bear his soul so much as to set the record straight as he saw it. He outlined his exploits to Richard Hammer, a writer. Also, he set a meeting with producer Martin Gosh about a possible film version of the project. Word of his confessional didn't set well with Luciano's former mob association. In 1962, he had a severe heart attack in the Naples airport, where he talked about the movie with Gosh. There's still some doubt that Lucky Luciano didn't die of natural disease, but his death may be due to retribution for his turning canary. Luciano's body was sent back to America and buried at St. John's Cemetery in New York City. It is said that Luciano was one of the most powerful men in this criminal world, and to this day, his influence over gangster activity can be felt in this country. He was the first person to challenge the old mafia by breaking all the ethnic barriers, thereby creating a network of gangs called La Cosa Nostra, an organized crime. In this way, Charles Lucky Luciano is known as the founding father of La Cosa Nostra. What do you think? Did you already know the story of Charles Lucky Luciano? Let us know what you think in the comments below and tell me what other mobsters you'd like to see on our channel.